Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we are going to talk about power functions. This, for my pre-calculus students, will be part two of your lesson five assignment. Part one was the greatest integer function. All right, so with power functions, let's look at a definition and some word description, and then we'll actually apply it. So power functions, by definition, are of the form f of x equals x raised to a number, where the number must be an integer, and it must be greater than or equal to 0. So you can't raise it to a negative power and be a power function. You can't raise it to a fractional power and be a power function. So like 0.5 raised to 0.5, that's out. Raised to 1.5, that's out. Raised to negative 1 or negative 2, that's out in order to be a power function. Okay, so we are talking about values raising it to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So the positive integers or 0. All right, so even values of n produce even functions, and they all basically have the same shape. They're going to be the same shape as our x squared parent function, so they are parabolas. The larger n is the steeper the curve is so the faster it increases except over the interval from when x is negative 1 to 1 where it actually gets flatter and we'll talk about that in a second odd values of n produce odd functions all with basically the same shape so odd values of n absolutely produce odd functions I wanted to put this little note in here because the ones that have the same shape are raised to the third power, the fifth power, the seventh, the ninth, the eleventh, etc. Anything, any odd uh, integer greater than one, because if you raise it to one, x to the first power is just y equals x, which is the linear parent function, which is shaped like a line, but when you raise to the power of three, five, seven, nine, all of those, they look like the basic cubic graph, like this, okay, they have that shape. All right, so I wanted to clarify that. Now, the larger n is still same as above, the steeper the curve is, except over the interval negative 1 to 1, where it actually gets flatter. All right, so let's draw a couple of these. So let's draw some even graphs. So uh, let's say uh, x squared. All right, well, that we already know is a parabola like this. Okay, so then if we draw x to the fourth, it's actually going to be the same shape but a little steeper like this okay for example all right but it still has the same shape it is steeper except over this interval between negative one and one where it's actually flatter again we'll talk about that in a second I want to draw two more graphs so we can draw x to the third power and x to the fifth power and we will see that they have the same rough shape. So x cubed has, it's an odd function, and it has something like that, that shape. x to the fifth has the same approximate shape, only it's a little steeper, so it's increasing, but it gets flatter right through here, and then it increases at a more rapid rate. Okay, so realize that this does have this change right here. Okay, I need to draw that a little bit better there okay it, it, it's not a line it does have that curve shape right here okay so that's the way that looks so let's talk about why um, as you increase so from two to four and then to six and then to eight why are these steeper well that makes sense because you're increasing at a more rapid rate but why are they flatter between negative one and one well think about it if you raise uh, for example point five 0.5 to the fourth power that means 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 and you're going to get a very small decimal so let's bring our calculator up real quick here and do that 0 0.5 raised to the fourth power is 0 0.0625 whereas if you square 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 raised to the power of 2 is actually 0.25 it's actually a bigger number so when you raise a decimal between 0 and 1 to a large power it gets smaller when you raise a value greater than 1 to a large power it gets bigger okay so that's why this thing flattens out between negative 1 and 1 as you raise your power higher and higher okay so I 
hope that that makes sense to you what's going on there. So between negative 1 and 1 you're raising a value that is a decimal between 0 and 1 to a large power giving you a much smaller number. So again if we raise 0.5 or one half to the sixth power, we're going to get an even smaller number. So our y value is going to be even flatter, even smaller than it was at when we raised it to the fourth power. So if we hit enter here, so that c 0.015 is even smaller than 0.0625. Okay, all right. So that's what's going on there. So let's look at a few examples, and this video won't take long. And I think this is going to be pretty basic and simple for you. All right. Here we have four examples. I think they will be very simple for you, like I said. So we have uh, example six, sketch the graph of x cubed. All right, well, it's an odd power, so it's going to have this basic shape like this. Okay, that's not perfect, but that's basically what it looks like. Uh, we could pull up our calculator and check that. So if we put in x cubed here in zoom six for a standard window, uh, we get that shape like this okay uh, next one says sketch the graph of x to the 6 well we just look at the power here okay it's an even power so it's going to have that parabola shape and it will be more narrow than our x squared parent function that we're used to drawing but it will have this basic shape so let's graph that real quick so x to the sixth will be a parabola shape and there you have it okay now let's graph we didn't do this before but let's go ahead and graph it compared to x squared and let's make the x squared graph darker so that we can see and you're you are going to see that the x squared graph is going to be wider so if I go ahead and graph x squared compared to this it's going to be uh, wider like that I'll label that one x squared and you will see that in the graph here Okay, now, uh, so x to the 6, you see, is increasing at a rapid rate, so it's narrower. But when we zoom in right here, you're going to see what we were talking about uh, before. So let's zoom box here, and let's, let's zoom in between negative 1 and 1 here. So that you can actually see how x to the 6, which is the thinner graph, is actually going to be flatter in this zone as compared to the thicker graph x squared okay all right so you can see how right through here notice how the x to the sixth graph the thinner line is actually a little flatter compared to the x squared graph that's the dark darker graph there so if we um, increase our y max a little bit so you can see this thing we'll make it like 1.5 graph it let's see how that looks okay so you can just start to see notice I'm gonna add a little bit more to that let's make it now 1.7 here alright so there's our x to the sixth and here's our x squared okay so look right right here at negative 1 our x to the 6 starts to overtake or starts to increase at a more rapid rate here compared to our x squared. And then over here at positive 1, when x is positive 1, our x to the 6 graph crosses over and starts to increase at a more rapid rate. But here between this negative 1 right here and positive 1, our x to the 6 is flatter than our or less steep is probably a better way to say it than our x squared graph but as soon as you get outside of positive one in this direction to the right or in to the left of negative one the x to the sixth is much steeper and the same thing applies when you go from x cubed to x to the fifth to x to the seventh okay all right so i think uh by now I've discussed that subject enough to where I, I believe you will understand that that negative one to one um, area is where the larger exponents the graphs of those are actually less steep but everything to the right of one and to the left of negative one they are much more steep as you increase that exponent okay alright so let's look at example eight now example eight 
uh, for the these examples 8 and 9, all transformations we have previously studied can be applied to power functions. Sketch the following functions and describe in words the transformation from the original parent function. Okay, so our parent function here is x to the fifth. It is an odd power, so it's going to have this shape, the same as x cubed. Okay, so that would be our parent function, but we are applying these transformations. This part right here means that we are going left to, okay, same rules apply. We're inside with x, so it's left and right, opposite of the sign. So that's left to. This part right here says that we're going up 4. So this has this shape. So our anchor point for these uh, cubic and to the fifth and to the seventh, etc. graphs are this transition point where it goes, uh, where it starts, it's increasing here and then it flattens out and then it starts to increase again. Okay, so uh, it, it, it's actually concavity, which we will discuss when we get to polynomial functions later, but that's a subject for another day. So uh, what we want to do is take this 0, 0 anchor point of our parent function x to the fifth, which would be through here like that, okay? We want to take this anchor point, 0, 0, we want to move it left 2 and up 4, okay? So our new anchor point is up here at negative 2, positive 4 instead of being through the origin, but it still has this basic shape. Okay, like this. It's just moved left two and up four. So that's the anchor point that we want to talk about. And remember that our parent function x to the fifth would be going through zero comma zero. All right, so our parent function would be like this. Okay, and we this is our transformation here. All right, next we have x to the fourth. So we already know it's got that parabola shape, all right? So let's work on this, and the let's see what's going on here. Well, this negative is reflecting us, reflect over x-axis, so it's going to be opening downward, and this part takes us down 2. So those that's our verbal description. Over here we were left 2 up 4, here we're reflecting over the x-axis and we're moving down to so we would look like this our uh, vertex is going to be here at 0 negative 2 and we are opening downward like this okay so that would be this function and our parent function would be just regular x to the fourth which would open up and be have a vertex at 0 0 our new vertex after we transformed it is at 0, negative 2 and we're flipped over. Okay, well that's it for this part of the lesson and I will see you in the next video.